Ron DeSantis is just standing up and he is fighting. He had a sit down with the CEO of Disney who was gonna slap him over the wrist. And DeSantis just completely went on the attack. We've got some video of Ron DeSantis after the CEO of Disney tried to smack him down on this thing. So here's what I can tell you. Uh, in the state of Florida, uh, we are not going to allow them to inject transgenderism into kindergarten. First graders shouldn't have uh, woke gender ideology imposed in their curriculums. And that is what we're standing for because we're standing for the kids and we're standing for the parents. Uh, and I can tell you this, there, the chance that I am going to back down from my commitment to students and back down from my commitment to parents' rights yeah simply because of fraudulent media narratives or pressure from woke corporations, the chances of that are zero. Yeah. And when you have companies that have made a fortune off being family friendly and catering to families and young kids, you know, they should understand that parents of young kids do not want this injected into their kids' kindergarten classroom. Uh, they do not want their first graders to go and being told that they can choose an opposite gender. That is not appropriate for those kids. And so if you're family friendly, understand uh, the parents who are actually raising families want to have their rights respected. And I also think that if you have companies like a Disney that are gonna say and criticize parents' rights, they're gonna criticize the fact uh, that we don't want transgenderism in kindergarten and first grade classrooms, if that's the hill that they're gonna die on, then how do they possibly explain lining their pockets with their relationship from the Communist Party of China? And so in Florida, our policy is gonna be based on the best interest of Florida citizens, not on the musing of global yeah. corporations. Man, you know, I've been saying it all week, but every time I play a clip of DeSantis, it's like you can breathe freely. It's like, oh, <laughs> truth, truth actually exists. Honesty actually exists. Brave people actually exist. Uh, Sarah, I wanna start with you here because I saw a random person, an anonymous person on Twitter this week called you a homophobe when uh, you were discussing this. As far as I know, you're not a homophobe, uh, but how great to see someone actually standing up against this nonsense. Yeah, Dave, uh, you know, it's interesting because DeSantis, I say this as a native Texan, right? Born and raised in Texas. Texas is supposed to be known as this bastion of freedom and liberty, and yet DeSantis is completely out Texasing Texas. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's so crazy to see his ascent, knowing how far he's come in such a short amount of time. Didn't he almost lose to a meth addict? I mean, yes. it was like not even a percentage point. Yeah. Like he was, he almost lost to that guy. And he seems to have red pilled almost the entire state now because I think he's learned what all of these woke corporations have not yet learned, which is just because these people, just because these leftist radicals scream the loudest does not mean that they represent the majority of Americans. We saw it in the governor's race in Virginia. We saw it in deep blue San Francisco when they had their uh, school board members recalled. I mean, we are seeing this all across the country because the leftist radicals are so radical, they don't know anything to do but double down on this crazy talk like we should have pornography in schools. Imagine fighting for pornography in schools. Uh, we, should, we should be teaching sex to children. We should be teaching them sexual positions. These are things that parents are not going to stand for. And luckily, Ron DeSantis knows that. Uh, and he's certainly fighting for them. I just have to say, I understand why you moved there, Dave. Uh, I am very embarrassed right now as a Texan that Ron DeSantis and Florida are leading the way uh, when it comes to freedom and liberty. And this is just one of the many examples. Listen, I never thought that my house would have to be a refuge for people from Texas, but I've got a couple <laughs> extra guest rooms. You are welcome anytime. Ian. Uh, I appreciate it. Ian, you try at the Daily Wire, you guys try to honestly assess the news and give people really what's going on. Uh, one of the strange things about this one is if you read the text of the bill, which we've covered on my show all week, and I'm sure you're covering as well, it has, the, the word gay is not in there. This is completely about being transparent with what kids are learning at schools and not hiding what teachers might be talking about with first graders from parents. 
Are you amazed at just the way the media gets away with this over and over again? It's just the meme is that this is the don't say gay bill and this is somehow all about bigotry and homophobia. Well, it's just shameless the way the entire media, literally the entire media has rallied around the don't say gay name, which is just completely uh, representative of what the bill actually does. But they do this with almost everything. Just the fact that they call abortion pro-choice. Everything about uh, the left is really just how they frame certain issues. Make it that if you oppose that issue, you oppose something drastic. It's the same with Black Lives Matter. The idea that if you oppose the idea that uh, police were systemically uh, brutal across the country, you were therefore racist, you believe black people didn't matter, which is of course absurd. And so I'm not really shocked that the media is doing this. I'm shocked that people are just so lazy. They don't even Google, read the bill. All of this stuff is available online. You can just find it. Gay isn't mentioned. The fact that people are going around charting gay as if that's going to undo the evil that is DeSantis and his legislation is just ridiculous, but indicative of where we are right now. Kyle, jumping off that point, I've wanted to have you on the show for a while because you're one of the guys on Twitter that I follow that is like, oh, you're hitting the media the right way and trying to expose some of this nonsense. Do we need better tactics in exposing this? I mean, something did happen, I think, this week where it was so obvious that that, that what they were doing was so dishonest that I do think we woke up some people, but it's never enough and it's never fast enough, right? Yeah, no, I think there's been a big shift between the political left and right. And so you have to see it's out there. He did. He sounded like America's governor. He sounded very much like a concerned dad on this issue, which I think really worked for him. And, uh, you know, it used to be that the populist left was excited about politicians standing up to big corporations. Well, Ron DeSantis has actually done yes. it. Not only in this case yes. with Disney, but with big tech. Remember, he signed that bill that, you know, Google and uh, Meta and Twitter can't deplatform Florida political candidates or they'll be fined $250,000 a day. Uh, so I think like he has get, gotten a lot of street cred with independence, center right. Uh, and no matter how much the mainstream media squeal at, at Ron DeSantis right now, he is cutting through the noise with the statements where he's very uh, focused and he's speaking to parents and he's speaking to, uh, you know, just people who are concerned about what's going on in the schools. And I think we saw that in Virginia. You could flip a state like that. So I think that, you know, with the with the woke left. They're really in dangerous territory right now with all of these lies, because I think DeSantis, you know, he, he sounds very rock steady and sure. And I think people are it's going to resonate with independence no matter what the mainstream media says at this point. So I think his leadership is is really is really uh, really much needed. And it's, it's helping to cut through the media noise.